Welcome to Cinema Savants. He's Todd Vandenberg. I'm Rob Steele. And if we sound different, blame Skype. I'm just saying they forced us to do an update this morning and I'm not happy. Anyway, other people who are not going to be happy this week include probably Ultraviolet. Do you remember Ultraviolet? Really yeah, weird movie with uh, Mila Jovinovich and a motorcycle mm-hmm. that goes up the side of buildings. Yeah, sure do. I'm just kidding. It's not that <laughs> one. Uh, it's the Ultraviolet cloud-based digital rights locker service where you would, you know, you would buy the DVD and it says you can download it from ultraviolet. We'll do that quickly. Cause they're going to be closing on July 31st. Oh, Same. darn. I don't know that I ever used it. Did you ever use that? I used it. Um, and that works just fine. And it's, it's, it's not exactly a tragedy that it's going away because almost certainly if you used it, you also at some point linked to voodoo because Walmart backs them both, owns That's them true. both, whatever. And if you've got Voodoo, it's already copied over to Voodoo. So not exactly a, a, a tragedy. No one's going to lose their access to their movies unless somehow they don't follow the directions that they'll get about 15,000 times between now and then. And assuming they haven't already done this, which I think this was automatic. So, yeah. Wouldn't surprise um, me. It makes sense. I mean, I mean, why why pay for whatever it costs to run ultraviolet when you're already doubling, doubling the, uh, the service with voodoo anyway. So I'm thinking you can, you know, it, it sounds like we're just we, voodoo ultraviolet would be the backup uh, of the, of the, who of the voodoo system. So really you've been run. If you're doing ultraviolet, you're just running off the backup system the whole time. And they kind of went, we don't need to do that. Right. So, you know, I, I, I get that. I, I don't suspect there's going to be a lot of people going, I lost my job because I worked for Ultraviolet. Well, you also worked for Voodoo, I assume. So just they moved my desk across the hall, I guess. <laughs> Turns very into disappointed an situation. I'm closer to the window. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to bigger and brighter things, I guess. Uh, there was a big deal made about the, what is it, Best Song Award at the Oscars where they were only going to actually perform, what was it, two, maybe three of the song, of the five songs that were nominated? Mostly it was two. And uh, people, the, the people who were nominated but not going to have it performed were going, hang on a minute. Why, why don't we have stuff? And wh- why aren't you doing our songs? And um, Oscar Miranda got into it and was very unhappy because his song was not going to be included until they announced this week. Okay, maybe it will. It, <laughs> I don't know what to make of this. What what exactly am I supposed to get out of this story? This this whole thing makes me want to watch. I know, I know you don't care about watching the Oscars, but it makes I me don't. want to see the Oscars even more than ever because this this just sounds like it's going to be like the train wreck of all train wrecks. I imagine they're just going to wing it. it. It never made sense that they were only going to perform two of the five or three of the five, whichever. Yeah, uh, it, it's not like it's going to have any impact on the voting because the voting's already done, but. It, you have millions of viewers. I think they like to brag that there are a billion viewers worldwide every time they have the show. And yet, uh, no. That turns into a lot of sales when people hear the song. They're saving a lot of time because they're not going to have a host. Uh, you would hope they're not going to replace the monologue and all the hokey skits with individual presenters doing the same kind of crap. So it, it was just kind of one of their one of the more mindless decisions that they have done like when they were going to have oh most popular movie oscar award which is uh lord it, i don't get so, that either so happy, so happy they shelved that stupid idea so but, yeah, if, definitely looking forward to the train wreck that the oscars will be just because donald trump rolled back the thing that says train brakes don't need to be as updated as everyone thinks they do causing that train wreck in what was, was it oregon doesn't mean you need to do it to the Oscars. That's my political one and, list. <laughs> and yet they will. Yeah, probably. Although speaking of train wrecks, and I, I, I thought this sounded like a good idea at first. All right. With all the musical biopics that have been coming out, we had, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, which was excellent. And Rocket Man, which looks like a train wreck at this point in my head. It, could, it might not be. I don't know. It has, it's not out yet. I mean, is there, there's not even a trailer for that yet, is there? 
Yeah, there's a trailer. There's a trailer. I remember. Yeah, Vaguely but, remember we'll it see. and going, eh, looks weird. Yeah. There's a new one coming. And it's actually for someone that I like better than Elton John. Uh, David Bowie, who's actually no longer with us. So it makes sense to do the biopic because he's not here to do anything new. Uh, they cast him this week. It's going to be musician and actor Johnny Flynn from things like Love Sick and Genius, neither of which I've seen, but that's okay. He looks kind of Bowie-ish. So I thought, hey, this could be cool until, and I don't know if you saw the until part of this, it's Duncan funny. Jones. Oh, boy. Duncan Jones, the son of David Bowie, whose real name was David Jones, who changed it because something about a monkey. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Duncan Jones says that the producers of the upcoming pick called Stardust don't have the rights for any of David Bowie's music <laughs> and that they're going to be going ahead and making this biopic of David Bowie during the Ziggy Stardust era and doing it without any of the David Bowie music. Just including song, other songs from that time period. Wow. That's like, and, and this is just the first thing that came to mind, doing a Jackie Robinson movie and saying, nah, we don't need to do any of that baseball stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that train wreck already? I mean, train how wreck, could you do that? That makes uh, not a lot of sense. No. Wow. We're, we're I, making a movie I about just, Woodrow Wilson and not including anything about government. I would imagine my first thought, which I guess shows how weird I am, was we're going to make a movie about Darwin, but we're not going to talk about not only evolution, we're not going to talk about science. Uh, because in Kansas, you couldn't show the movie anyway, probably. Uh, wow. I, I would assume and hope that this is just like Duncan has just launched the first volley in, in, a, in a war of this is how much it's going to cost you for the rights to the songs. Um because it should be on the expensive side, because that is basically the story, right? I would think. Uh, very, very bizarre. And certainly fits what's turning into the theme, that's for sure. Train wreck. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bill Gates movie without Microsoft. <laughs> uh, what? That's like doing a Batman TV series without having Batman in it. Oh, wait, they've done that too. Um Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, um, speaking of superheroes, kind of, Black Panther coming back uh, for one week. And actually, we're halfway through it. Sorry we didn't get to it sooner, but they didn't tell us either. Uh, the first week of Black History Month, which is February, if somehow you didn't know that, at participating, uh, it's AMC Theaters, I think. AMC Theaters. Um, 50 select AMC Theaters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Check and see if you're one of the theaters that has Black Panther for free. Uh, I think that's a cool idea. That's I mean, not just because awesome awesome of Black History Month, but, you know, uh, here's an Oscar nominated film. Go see it for free. What do you think? I was really su sorry, surprised that they, that they did that. I'm not quite sure why it's only at, not that it's only at AMC theaters. I, I get that. I mean, they're partnering for it. Why it's only at 250 instead of, 500 600 whatever but 250 theaters that covers a, a lot of, of, of the country uh, again just google free black panther and i'm sure it will come up um, yeah. but and it's it is first come first serve i mean you do go through the process log in order your ticket you can get either one or two but you do have to be at the theater a little on the early side and not that they're going to over sell a free thing because i did check in a couple areas and they were already sold out and that was mm, back on Wednesday. But I was just looking at a particular day. So odds are there might still be plenty available. But Rob said, an, an Oscar-nominated movie, which uh, that's not necessarily a great thing. But it's a freaking Black Panther for free. Yeah, Completely amazing. It's, well, I mean, it, it's also not that Disney needs the money. They already made, what, one and a half billion dollars on that movie. <laughs> it's a very cool thing that they're doing. Very cool. Uh, let's see. But next, the next Marvel movie coming out uh, had a bit of news about that. The Captain Marvel movie. Uh, some people knew that uh, Jude Law and Annette Benning were in this movie, which is a good thing because they're both really good actors. And we found out Jude Law is playing uh, the bad guy of the movie whose name I don't remember. And it's not relevant to this part because we found out who Annette Benning is going to be playing. 
And this one's kind of weird if you know the books. She's supposed to be playing the Supreme Intelligence, which is the leader of a alien race called the Kree. Now, the for those of you who don't know the Supreme Intelligence, it's always been depicted in the books as being essentially Jabba the Hutt's head, only green with, with tentacles. I can see why they cast her. And I'm like, Annette Benning, <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. Now, I'm not... If they give it some kind of different body as like, a, ooh, it's a holographic image and it shows up as Annette Benning, that's not a bad thing. But I'm picturing Jabba's head with Annette Benning's voice and it doesn't work in my head. I'm hoping for the hologram kind of mental telepathy thing, whatever. That might work. But does this work for you? I don't know. I don't care what the character is like, to be honest. As long as it's well written, which... <clears throat> that would be kind of weird for a Marvel film not to have a character well written and well acted and seems to be in good hands. So, yeah, it just struck me as odd. I'm not knocking Annette Benning in any way. I like Annette Benning. So, there we are. Um, I was debating as to whether or not I should even bring up this next bit, but it's a sequel that we don't need. So, yes, I'll bring it up. Anne Hathaway as a a new movie that she's wanting to do. I don't know that they've actually started production on it yet, but they finally finished the script for the third princess diaries movie, even though it's been 15 years since the last one. And I'm not sure she's really so much a princess anymore. Do, does she really need to go back to this? I mean, I guess if it's something she wants to do, I get it, but if it's something the fans of princess diaries and princess diaries too, weren't, which I don't really care about either of the movies, but probably not the target audience. So have at it. My my oldest daughter really liked these movies when they came out. And then I mentioned this to her yesterday and she kind of went, really? Why? I'm like, you don't want it? No. I'd, I'd like to see her as Catwoman again with a decent script, but not, uh, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> You've been hanging out with me too much. So just yeah. saying. I can um, see. That kind of goes along with... Uh, the CW network, which has a lot of DC superheroes, which of which Catwoman uh, is not exactly a hero, but that's beside the point. She's a character in it. And I don't know if you saw this. Any, it's All of the CW shows that started in the fall have been renewed. I've never seen a network do that before. Just across the board, everybody comes back next year. They must feel like they're the anti-Netflix. Oh, we have a show? We're going to keep it. <laughs> I was... Uh... I don't know if I was surprised with that because from what I understand, all their shows are doing well as far as ratings go. They don't have any bombs and uh, I can't think of any of the shows that they have on that aren't at least not that I've seen them all, but overall the, the overall reaction is, is good. So I think with, with the exception of charmed, because my, it, at least in my house, my, my wife and all my daughters love the original Charmed. And they've looked at the new version and thought, this is crap. Really? Well, they, they, oh, made, wow. they made a lot of changes, some of which work, most of which don't. Anyway, that's our opinion. Make of it what you wish. <laughs> but uh, speaking of DC Comics and superhero <laughs> shows. I just, I'm uh, sorry. I just thought something. Though, but is it? Are, are they are they not witches? Are they doing the David Bowie yeah. biopic thing? They, they might be. <laughs> that could be it. Maybe that's what the problem is. Damn yeah. you, Ziggy Stardust. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so DC superhero shows moving over to the Sci-Fi Network, which is doing Krypton, the prequel series to Superman, which I've never watched. Have you watched Krypton? I have not watched Krypton because I don't really care to see Jor-El. It's the Jor-El series. You know, it's like you said much earlier, which I have seen maybe 10 minutes of. Don't really want to see a Batman show without Batman. Not interested in Superman without Superman. Well, I will give them this. They're bringing in a character that may make me watch this episode. Um, sorry, I just lost the name. Here we go. Emmett J. Scanlon, who's from apparently two things called The Fall and Hollyoaks, uh, neither of which I've even heard of. But that's beside the point. He scored the role of Lobo, the intergalactic bounty hunter who usually needs to be censored in the in the books because he's got a potty mouth. Anyway, they released a picture of what he looks like in this series. And holy cow, he looks like he does in the books. He does. I was pleasantly surprised at that. 
Uh, and if you don't know what he looks like, think of Rob Zombie with uh, only much more pale with bl- completely bloodshot eyes. There you go. And big. And big. That That is also true. He's a, a fairly substantial character. Yes. So that could be interesting. The episode is supposed to come out, and I love the way they phrased this, sometime later this year. Because that's not vague or anything. Thanks. <laughs> oh, let's see. Something else that's supposed to be coming out next year. Almost a year from now, actually. The ne- the Birds of Prey movie, which is kind of a spin-up. Spin-up? Spin-off? Follow-up? Yeah, spin-up. There we go. To <laughs> the Suicide Squad movie that tanked. God, was that two years ago now? Anyway, um... Margot Robbie posted a quick video of herself in the Birds of Prey movie as Harley Quinn with Rosie Perez dressed as Renee Montoya and Chris Messina's Victor Zaz and all the other characters. Basically, it's just a a photo shoot of what the characters are going to look like in the movie, even though they haven't really started. I, they're starting filming soon. That's nice. Um I don't know. Did you see this? Did any of the characters stand out to you other than Margot Robbie's really short hair for Harley Quinn? I didn't see it and don't really care. Mainly mainly because all of a sudden Birds of Prey has to have Margot Robbie in it because they have to have Harley Quinn because they have to have Margot Robbie. Um, nah, don't care. That was kind of my opinion of it as well. Just kind of a, ooh, look, that's – I know Ewan McGregor is going to be in it. I know I'm going to see it at some point and yet – uh, let's see. What was the other DC news? Bat movie. That's right. The, the straight up Batman himself, who is going to be in this Batman movie. Which is a plus. We just don't know who's playing him because apparently it's not going to be Ben Affleck. Nope. Uh, they did put a, and this is weird. They haven't cast it. I'm not even sure they've written it. Release date, June 25th, 2021. It's, Thanks. I know they at least have a, a rough draft and Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves, yeah, Matt Reeves uh, said, and this is the thing I like about it a lot, is that it's going to have pretty much a rogues gallery of the Bat villains. I'm good with that. Because it's going to be Batman as the world's greatest detective, which they really haven't pushed very much in any of the movies. I mean, they kind of touch at it here and there, but this is going to be Batman solving a very complex crime, which... Hey, it's about time they, they did that. And the rumors are that it could be based on the long Halloween. Now, if that's what they're doing, I'm totally on board with that. That would be fantastic. I have also so, heard that Hush is a possibility. Also fantastic. Also a great storyline. Hopefully, they're actually using an established storyline, which is great, instead of coming up with something original, which has all the potential of being suck. Because that's basically what DC has done with so much of their live action. Instead of just, oh, we've got... Literally tens of thousands of awesome scripts waiting to be done at Bill will ignore them. So See, I, uh, one, I think that's that's why yeah. Iron Man resonated with me is because I looked at it and went, I know that story, but I've never yeah. seen it quite this way. I know I even have that comic, but I've never seen it, you know, on a live screen. I think that's why it resonated so much. And yeah, DC exactly. doesn't do it. And it doesn't matter whether, you know, it has to it doesn't have to appeal to the say fanboys, if you want to put it that way. Uh but the fact that those stories resonated with the fans should tell you that those are well-crafted stories. So why not use them? So we'll hopefully, hopefully DC has pulled their <clears throat> cranium out of an orifice and realized, oh, let's do this. So like I said, Wonder Woman and apparently Aquaman notwithstanding, they've really missed the mark a lot. So it would be great if they did this. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Mark missing, I'm not sure this <laughs> – I'm not sure this next movie needed to be made or needs to be made, but I found out that we could be seeing it by Christmas. Ooh. Oh dear. Thing is it's Bill and Ted face the music. That's right. The third Bill and Ted movie of which, uh, Oh, what is he? His executive producer, Steven Soderbergh says, I've read the script. It's going to be hilarious, which sounds to me like a flop written all over it. But, Whenever someone says it's going to be hilarious, it, it it when was the last time it ever was? I'm trying to remember you, a time when that's actually happened. Are you besmirching the legacy just because the second movie was awful? I it, 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 oh this at this point it it's not that it's going to be awful because the second one was crap. 
I'm saying it because the producer said it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. And whenever I've seen a producer say it's going to be hilarious, it never is to me. Kind of like the new Ghostbusters movie. We flipped everyone. Everyone now has breasts and it's going to be hilarious. Every, well, everyone did have breasts. That's true. But it wasn't hilarious. It, and that's not a knock on the women. It's a knock on the script. Exactly. The problem was not everyone had a script. Uh, <laughs> wow. That movie, speaking of train wrecks. Anyway, yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying because all too often you get into the overhype thing. And I, I'm hopeful for it. Uh, the, the fact that Alex Winter is going to be in it again, that, not that I'm a big fan of Alex Winter, but... That they got the original, well, as much of the original that? cast. Well, okay, well, uh, other than Bill and Ted, the original cast consisted of George Carlin, who can't be in this because he's no longer with us. Right. But we're, we're, <laughs> they got the guys, so I'm still kind of hopeful. We'll see. We, we'll see. I'm sure there will be a trailer next week or something. <laughs> just because they like to rush things out. Um now, speaking of trailers, just a little thing to end the show with, because I saw this trailer and I said, I, I don't even want to see the trailer. But you know what? We watch movies so you don't have to. So I included this and it was kind of weird because um, I'm not a fan of the Fast and Furious movies. I think I've seen like the first three of them. Granted, I only watched the third one because it was the only decent movie on the flight I was on. <laughs> um, I didn't have a whole lot of choice in that matter, but – there's a spinoff for Fast and Furious called Hobbs and Shaw, starring The Rock and Jason ah, Statham. Jason Statham? Mm-hmm. Yes. Sorry, I blanked for a minute. I'm like, I can picture him. I see him in like 30 other movies. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, The Rock and Jason Statham as Hobbs and Shaw versus Idris Elba, who for some reason in this movie has superpowers. Yes. And as much as I looked at it and went, it, it said, yeah, from the universe of Fast and Furious, and I was like, uh, all right. This actually looks like it could be a fun movie. This, this, I agree. I just saw the trailer this morning. It looks, well, I'm sorry. It doesn't look hilarious. It looks really, really funny. Um, it, This much more looks like it's from the universe of Crank or even Crank 2 because this looks so crazy over the top. Uh, I, I like the fact that they've taken it in that direction. Uh, it just looks like a fun, enjoyable, humorous film. And I, this is a movie I'm interested in watching. And like you, I've actually seen the Fast and Furious 3. Haven't seen the first one. I think seen parts of the second and probably parts of, I don't know, some random number after that. Because uh, I just don't really care for the storyline. I'm sorry, and, when you have a car chase that includes a submarine, it kind of makes me go, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I saw enough of it in the trailers to be happy with it but this looks really really funny and i really like the chemistry the two have so i'm actually looking forward to fast and furious presents hobbs and shock because that apparently that has to be the title interesting i did want to mention one more thing though oh we yes go ahead Oscars earlier, and we were talking about black panther and apparently noted author brett easton ellis author of american psycho uh proclaimed that he didn't think black panther was one worthy of an Oscar nomination uh, tweeted that man. There has been basically a Twitter war over that. So a lot of people agreeing with him, a lot of people disagreeing with him. And I took the liberty of replying under our account, cinema savants. Hey, and just wondered why anybody cared what Brett Easton Ellis thought, because last I can recall, he hasn't been relevant since American psycho came out, which was in 2000. And since he had nothing to do with the film, he really hasn't been relevant since 1991 when the book came out. And I suggested <laughs> that perhaps we could all go to a private screening of The Canyons, which is his most recent work, which he did write the screenplay for. And we could join the other five people who had previously seen it. I, I can't imagine why anybody would give a damn what Brett Easton Ellis thinks about anything in pop culture. I mean, that, this is the first time I've heard the guy's name in years. Really? And and you care what he thinks about Black Panther? So we probably doubled his exposure just by talking about him now. I just, what an ego trip to think that, oh, well, I, as a random non-relevant writer, I'm going to proclaim this is not worthy of an Oscar. Really? Really? Wow. What films he produced aren't worthy of being nominated for an Oscar, Mr. Ellis? Like, oh, yeah, none. Like, what a fool, what an ego trip. Go back into your 
and I'm in it again. Go away, dude. Well, he anyway, has a, he has a podcast too, but pff, yeah. yeah, just really no, strange. At, and I get uh, iron us saying, "Oh, this movie sucks." Whatever, I get that. But again, he has a lot more public recognition than just to come out and just questions like, "Well, why is this really?" That's really odd. I just wonder what his reasoning is because most people. Most people think that this is actually a very well-crafted film and has an excellent script and excellent production values, great direction, excellent acting. I don't know why it wouldn't be worthy of an Oscar. And that's not just me. That's not just you. That's yeah. pretty sure that's the vast majority of the movie going public. But again, the public isn't always right, but it has the same critical response, too. So it seems it would be more likely that Mr. Ellis, you could just say, eh, it's not my cup of tea as opposed to making this proclamation. So again, glad you had your moment in the sun again, since you've been unheard of for decades. So, okay. I'll just throw this out there. Do you think black Panther is actually going to win? I'm going to say no. Two see, reasons. I, I'm on the same, but I, I, do, I love that it was nominated. I don't think it's going to win, not because it's not a good movie, but because you know, frankly, I'm astounded. It did get nominated. Because of the superhero movie stigma, right? I guess, but I think uh, that's part of it. I think because the the um, makeup of the membership is still predominantly older and whiter, um, I think it's going to lose votes partly because of that. And I'm not saying the Academy is racist. I'm just saying that a large percentage of the voters, this is not going to be the kind of movie that they care about. That's all it is. It's not a racist thing at all. The third thing is I do think there were better movies last year. Again, Black Panther, probably my top five, but not my number one. Um, yeah. And I can't say right now what I think would win. I just don't. I think there are too many things going against it to win. But like you, I was astonished happily that happily. it was even nominated. Happily. Let's let's stress that word. Happily. And we can end on a happily note then. Indeed. See? So uh, come back on Friday when we've got some reviews of stuff. I think we have another kids movie. Mm -hmm. See something to look forward to. Uh, in the meantime, you can listen to our previous shows and l find out things that you want to go see. And then you can get out and go see a movie. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed. Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. Darn, that's the end.